Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about qualifications. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you de know, how do you determine if a software engineer is overqualified for your team? Well, uh, I sort of look at their experience level and I look at the way that they think and reason and then I compare that to the work that we're doing within the team. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's, uh, it's really down to just figuring out like what type of challenges are and like what type of work is the team basically doing and how likely is it that this person will find that stimulating I've worked in teams where I mean there is a popular opinion saying that uh, no one hires juniors etc etc and I mean I'm not gonna say that that's not sometimes the case but in the cases where you might have someone who actually knows how to compose a software team an efficient one both from the technical perspective and cost uh, they will tell you that not all, all teams are made equally and the like I've had teams where I've basically said to the to the people who give give out the headcount to the teams that we don't need more seniors to this team because the work that we are doing it's we already have a few mid levels and the work that we are doing is so simple that it's probably not going to be very fun for someone who has like extensive experience with this stuff which is something that is a little bit underappreciated sometimes I think where uh, we sort of forget that the very very good software developers like the top software developers they have well it, it's not always the case but usually it's a good idea to try to match them with the sort of work that they find interesting uh, even to a greater that extent than it is for most software developers because the very top-notch software developers they are going to uh, they're basically going to return your investment usually regardless of what they do and you might not keep them around for very long if you have them doing things that are like sort of under stimulating or arbitrary to them or so forth uh, which is sort of the argument that I have made to a few people that I've well a few managers in my time where I basically pointed and said that you have lost people due to the fact that you just add them to like an arbitrary team and you don't consider that uh, these are highly talented people that you're never going to find twice most likely and you're losing them because you're putting them in a situation where you treat them as equal to everybody else but they're not I know that that might not sound politically correct but the reality is that just as different athletes have different skill levels or different companies do different like in differently in terms of revenue and so forth and so forth it's the same thing with software developers some of them are really really good and some of them are not going to be really really good and the ones that if you want to keep the ones that are really really good it's really important to match them correctly then I mean it's the same thing in the other direction if you take a junior level software developer and you put them in a in a very tough spot where you might ask them to do things that a senior might be doing well then you have a different sort of problem now it's not a problem of under stimulating or having an over overqualified person it's an underqualified person that and that's not really their fault it is there is a mismatch between what you what they know and what you're gonna have them doing so the easy way as I said is to do the thing that I say that everybody every single software company needs to be doing which is to have a code test and have a personal interview with a senior level experience or someone who is very good at software development these are the two should be the two criteria for every interview because if you're interviewing for a team or something like that and you really know the work and you at the very least understand how people usually behave at different skill levels you can determine 
if there's a match between the, this person and the job that they're gonna do. It's not always the case, I mean it's not like you have to bend over backwards for every person who comes through the door, but if you want to figure out if you're sort of doing something that I've seen a few times as well, where like you, you take like a massively talented software developer who has a lot of hunger and passion and you put them in a position where things sort of like uh, it's not really something that's going to stimulate them well it's uh, it depends on the person it's not always going to turn out poorly it's just to me it's a bit of a wasted resource if that makes sense it's uh, it, it's sort of like spend uh, you, you're you're taking a star player and you're putting them in like a i don't know in a position where you can't really leverage uh, and grow them in a way that's going to benefit the company at large. Not all companies care about that sort of stuff, but for the ones who do, this is definitely a factor, I would say. So, what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I determine if a software engineer is overqualified is that I need to know the team. In other words, I need to know what they're doing and sort of the work that they do. It helps if you look at the code and you check out a few stories and go to a few of their stand-ups or something like that. If it's my own team, it's the same thing. Like I know the team that I work with, I know what we do and I know how difficult it is and I know the people and so forth. And when you do know all of these things, it's fairly easy to talk to, so when you talk to someone, like uh, should this person be in this team or maybe they should lead their own team, etc., etc. which is the thing that I usually do like when I do interviews and so forth where I talk to a person and I can hear very quickly if this is like someone we should just you know should we hire this person to be just another quote unquote another software developer uh, is this a junior level type of person who's probably going to need some help or is this a person who's really 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 good and if that is the question is this the right person to put in uh, this specific team or maybe we have something where they might like have the ability to have a greater impact than what they would have had if they put were put in this sort of team and that comes in as I said to that balance uh, which is these are the sorts of uh, observations you can make usually when you have people who are you know not just purebred managers who don't really know how the teams are doing because the average engineering manager as I've said on multiple occasions they they don't know how to how the coding actually works usually they don't know how the work is done they don't know the team or how they code or their behaviors in code reviews and so forth so they don't even know if this person is the right person to put into this team and so it's really great if you can leverage if you have like tech leads or people who actually do the coding and involve them in that process because they're going to be able to give you a pretty good idea I think of how how to think about every candidate that comes through the door have a great day